Okay, so we're at Reish Lamed Zayin, the bottom. Ve'achakach Omad Rabbeinu Moshe Mikutzi V'chibar Sefer Acher. After the Rambam, somebody named Rabbi Moshe Mikutzi, um, one of the Bali Tosfos, wrote a book. Ve'liket Mi'oisoi Sefer Shel Ma'imoni. He gleaned information from the Sefer of the Rambam. V'chibar Alav Shor Dvorim Shel Achronim. And added to it the commentaries of those who came after. Veken kol echad veechad also sefer lefim asheroa. And so afterwards, all of the different authors also write wrote different books, according to inyon edor shayabo the matters that were being judged and um, questioned by their generation. Veken chibur rabbonim rabim psakos and many rabbis wrote psakalochos kagon rokeach. Rabbi Eliezer Mimetz, Vavia Ezri, Vor Zerua, of the great Rishonim. Vechen also Rabbonim Rabim, many other rabbis, Kolachad Chibra Sefer Lefim Ashiro, in Yoni Hador Shahayabo, each wrote different works according to what they thought was needed by their times. Kiro Shinis Maet Bavanusenu Rabim, Yadiyas Talmud, because they saw that in our great transgression, knowledge of the Talmud became greatly diminished. And a person cannot know the true meaning of the Talmud without seeing it explained and clarified and decided by in the, um, the works of these uh, Rishonim and Achronim. And also Rabbeinu Shlomo, the best of memory. Who was that? Hmm? Very good. Shorabi Yamav Mut al Vavos, who saw the constriction of the heart in his times, Shayu Adoiroiz Bavanusenu Rabbi Mismaatim Vahokim, the generations were becoming deplenished. That's not deplenished, diminished. Valken, Nis Oire Liboy Le Faresh at Talmud, Lamed Bene Israel Dea, and therefore he thought it appropriate to explain the Talmud in order to teach the Jewish people knowledge and wisdom. V'achakach omdu yotze girechol. Afterwards, there came his descendants, Rabbeinu Tam, Rabbeinu Yitzchak, Usha Rabbonim. They were the Balei Tosfos, his grandsons. Yes. Pilpul godul ad shechibru at Tosfos b'shivaso shel Rabbi Yitzchak, and they added the commentary of the um, of the uh, uh, their additional commentary, which was printed in the Talmud as the Tosfot, which means the additional commentaries, addition to who. To Rashi. And they wrote all of this commentary in the yeshiva of Rabbi Yitzchak. Shahaya Balatosvos. Excuse me. Uh, what? Did I skip something? Oh, yes. Shahaya Balatosvot. He was the master of the Tosvot, Rabbi Yitzchak? Or does it mean he was one of the Tosvot? It sounds like this. He was the master of the Tosvot. It was in his yeshiva. And it says, Shahaya Balatosvot. He. Yeah, the re. Yeah, the re. Very good. It says, but he says here, Shehaya Bal Hatosvot. He was the Bal Hatosvot. Maybe, in other words, it was, maybe the the re oversaw the writing of the of the of the of the commentary Tosvot, similar to the way Rebut Al Nasi oversaw the, the the authorship of the Mishnah. V'shama you gadolim. And there you had great rabbis, great scholars. Kagon, Rabbi Shimshon Mishans, Shechibar Gamke and Tosafos, Levad Mishar Talmidim, Shaya Lerav Meod, Lerav Meod, in addition to the many other Talmidim that they were. Vem Hayu Giburim Batoira, they were great in Torah. Vahayal Levavam Gol Meod, their hearts were very, were very large. Upasuach, and extended. Keulam. Yeah, like the uh, court, <laughs> like the courtyard of the base of Migdash. and they learned with great, with great fervor. Umasu nafsham the Torah. They 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 dedicated themselves greatly to the Torah. Vayodu below iun, kol Talmud, perush Rashi, v'tosvos. They didn't have to work very hard to understand it, understand it in depth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
the troubles increased mm -hmm. and yeshivas diminished. And these uh, writings of the Bali Tosfos became too difficult for the average person to understand. So other people came and commented on the Tosfos. Each one according to his wisdom. In order to make easier and more accessible for the, the people of their generation, learning. In those days, there were still people who were quite knowledgeable and well-versed in the entire Talmud. And they knew the, the performance of the mitzvahs not just from the Rambam or from the synopsis of the halachic works, but rather from the Talmud itself. Which means you have to know the entire Talmud, because there's no topic in the Gemara which is fully discussed in one area. Rather, it's discussed throughout the Talmud in many different tractates. So if you know an area of halacha from the Talmud, what that means is you're very well versed with the entire Talmud. <laughs> Until they were, they left and were expelled from France. <laughs> were there in France. They were learning, um, you know, with, with, with a great degree of Torah knowledge. As was done by the early generations in the times of the Talmud in Babel. And they put a lot of, they spent a great effort on reviewing the Talmud in order to fulfill that which they learned. Sharp in your teeth. If somebody asks you something, it's a matter of Torah, you should say, um, uh, well, um, uh, um, uh, it depends. <laughs> depends. Uh, it's a machlokis. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, somebody asks a question. If you want to give the right answer, if you don't know the answer and you want to give the right answer, you say it's a machlokis. It's a machlokis. Ah, ah machlokis. Ah, it's a Gandim and Omar, don't stutter and say, Ella Emorlo, rather say to him immediately, Miad. This is the law. Kizeh Davar Iev Shahu. Such clarity is now impossible. That a person's answer should be boom on the tip of his tongue. And the right answer, it's impossible unless he's constantly reviewing his learning. As it was said by the sages in Tractate Hagiga, Dav Tesam and Base. You can't compare somebody who's learned something a hundred times to one who's learned a hundred and one. On the by the one nowadays. On the by the one. I'm reading Meseches Tanis, and furthermore, it says in Meseches Tanis, Tav Chesam and Aleph, Sheresh Lokish Hayachoyzer Halacha Arbaim Pamim Koydem Shabal Lifnei Rabbi Yochanan. He chazered the halacha forty times before coming before Rabbi Yochanan, so he should know what he's talking about. And that's what was done by everybody in the days of the Talmud. They learned it, but they spent a lot of time reviewing it again and again and again and again and again. It was very clearly fixed on their tongues, and they knew precisely what the Torah said. Then the sages told us in Meseches Megillah, 
שרבאשי היה יוסיף קומי דה רב כהנא, רבאשי סט בפור רב כהנא, נוגה ולא יוסר רבונן. It became light and the sages did not come. אמר לי סט אם, מי תאי ולא יוסר רבונן, why didn't the rabbis come? אמר לי סט אם, דלמד תרידי בסודס פורים. Maybe they're busy with Sudas Purim. It must be that it, it must be that it was it was near it was near Purim. Yeah, it must be somehow it was near Purim. Otherwise, what kind of an answer is this? He said to them, they couldn't have eaten their meal in the morning. Did you sir not hear that which was taught by Rava? Sudas Purim Shachalo Belaylo. לא יוצא ידי חבסוי. אה, so when he says מדרייסה, he must mean at night. I would say אורטה. מדאורטה. Yeah. Yeah, I translated it by day. I thought it was literally referring to day. But אורטה is also a reference to night. Yeah. It's the Orla Bar say. That's what he says. Yeah, he says. So it must have been on Purim. And he says, where are the Talmudian? They haven't come to Yeshiva. So he says, maybe they're busy with Sudas Purim. Sudas Purim, couldn't they have eaten by night? So he said, didn't you hear the teaching of Rav who said, Sudas Purim, Shochlo Belayla, Lo Yotzli Yedech Vosoy, can't be eaten by night. It has to be consumed by day. My timer. It says days of drinking and joy. Day, but not by night. Amalei, said to him, I'm Rav Ahachi. Amalei in. Why Rav said this? He said, yeah. So now I'm in a Arba'im Zinin. So he learned it 40 times. And it became, something was like in his pocket. What was he reviewing? The idea that the Suda has to be done by day? You need 40 times for that? What? You asked the question, what's the answer? What? What's the answer? Why do you have to do it 40 times? Oh, so here. I mean, I'm, 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 the answer. Yeah, the author is bringing the answer. Oh. <laughs> says, come take a look. This matter is very simple. <laughs> Nevertheless, he reviewed it many times. 40, in fact. <laughs> Nowadays, nobody would say this any more than once. Sodas Purim has to be done by day. It's gendic. It's finished. It's over. You need to say it twice? Remember for the rest of your life now. Sodas Purim, by night, and a Yotze. Nevertheless, he repeated it 40 times. And there are many proofs throughout the Talmud that everybody was very accustomed to the idea of Chazara, which nowadays, like I said, we're very weak on. Lax. And everybody had their own regiment of X number of chapters to review a day. And if they were too busy during the day to review their chapters, what would they do? They would repay by night. That's what the Gorin Ervin says in Samahay Amarav. You have to make it up by day, by night. Every 30 days they would review their their, their limud. And this is how they learned in Tzafat. Until they got to great Torah knowledge. They did not need the works of the Poskim. Because they knew the Halacha from the Gemara and from the Tosfos. But since the Jews were exiled from Tzafat, Learning went way, way, way down. So you see 
how important and illustrious the French Jewish community is. I think we're going to stop here today. We have a shorter class. Mm -hmm.